tournament, Green Red Devotion, on this side of the tournament, playing against Tom Judge. And isn't it ironic that Tom is in game number three with Green Red Dragons, a deck that Chris helped put on the map. And Tom's getting in the air there with a Thunderbreak region, and a place where Green Red Devotion is very soft is in the air. Yeah, you have Dragon Lord Tarka, you have Hornet Queen, you have some copies of Arbor Colossus in your sideboard, but Green Devotion, even its good draws, are vulnerable to things like a fast Thunderbreak region into a Storm Breath Dragon. Even its good draws can fall to that sometimes. I'm taking a look at Chris's sideboard. I'm doing what I like to call the Arbor Colossus check. He does have two in the sideboard. Uh, this deck list is going to look very similar to what we just saw in the last round. It, it, you can tell the guys from Roanoke, the Star City Games crew, they are definitely playing Devotion this weekend. And another issue here from the green Devotion side of it is Crater's Claws. This deck does not answer the board very well, not a lot in terms of removal, and it often doesn't win very quickly. And so you can stabilize the game, but if you took some hits in the air, Crater's Claws can finish the job. Looks like we got some creatures attacking here, maybe going after Xenagos. You can see Chris's hand. One card that does give him some game in the air as well is Hornet Queen, and he has one of those in his hand right now. But you see the Crater Claws in Tom's hand, and that's a big weakness here on Chris's side of the table. He may play Hornet Queen, possibly stabilize the air, and still get burned out. There's a Rattleclaw Mystic and a passing in the turn. Judge is going to untap with that Thunderbreak region. That gives him an advantage right now. He'll draw a card. Did not look excited about what he drew. Another copy of Thunderbreak region in hand. Here's three mana. Looks like maybe a copy of Hornet Nest. And it is. Hornet Nest sets up a pretty nice here turn here for Tom, potentially, where he can plus the Xenagos and with the Mountain left over, cast the other Thunderbreak region in hand. Still being able to leave Sylvan Carry added on defense as well. Yep. Which is pretty nice. It makes it very hard for Chris to attack the Xenagos profitably next turn. That Xenagos is going to be working overtime. He's going to start by ticking up to three now, it seems, as Tom is going to go reaching for the die. It's also possible Tom just goes after his own nest. Okay. With, with the Crater's Claws. Okay. Uh, I mean, Tom's really thinking about this. Maybe not this turn, but potentially next turn, depending on what Chris does. I suppose, what's the better use of the Crater's Claws here? Well, he's tapping the carry added now. Yes. He is going to burst his own nest open. Combo. This is interesting. That leads to a lot of Hornets. So there goes the Hornet Nest. I've been waiting for this to happen for some time, by the way. I've seen it with Roast. But I, I was hoping it would happen more often. Like, we don't get to see this interaction happen very often where you just blow up your own nest. Yep. It is charming. It doesn't feel like it's in the spirit of the nest. I, I like it that you just get to hit the nest with your own baseball bat. And I, I think part of the motivation for Tom to do that play last turn was the Genesis Hydra on top of Chris's deck alongside all the mana he has available. He might feel like that second copy of Thunderbreak region is worth very little. If, if Chris is able to get to Arbor Colossus, to Hornet Queen, to Dragonlord, to Tarka, uh, that second Thunderbreak region isn't worth very much. So Tom might feel like he needs to go wide here, go around one blocker with a variety of Hornets. Yeah, I think that's the big question is, how good is the Hornet's Nest and how good is the Greatest Claws? Can I realistically burn Chris out from 13? Probably not. Yeah. Not uh, against a Corsair Crufix and, and Chris likely to stabilize the, the game this turn. Now, if I draw multiple copies of Crater's Claws, maybe I can. But at this point, if you're Tom, you're maybe thinking to yourself, well, I only had one, and I had to make the most of the one that I that I had. And it sets it up so that the next Crater Claw is likely to be lethal no matter what, because the Xenagos generates so much mana this is true. alongside all the Hornet tokens. Ferocious enabled as well. Yep. And Chris can't really attack. See, so the top card is now Sylvan Carry added. Chris sacrificing a wooded foothills there to get a land out of his deck. Seems as though it may be Hornet Queen time. And you mentioned the other card in hand, and it's a copy of Genesis Hydra. A little bit of Nykthos mana here for Van Meter.
We'll see. It feels like maybe he's going towards the Hydra. Yep. So it'll be for a lot. Devotion looking pretty popular this weekend. I mean, not a hard sell on the on the row, no crew. Remember Grand Prix Miami? They were all on green splash white devotion. I think we uh, we hit. That counts. Would you classify that as a hit? Ugin counts. Ugin will play here. Yeah. The one of Ugin in the sideboard is a hit. If I'm Tom Judge, I'm not thrilled with what has just happened. Now, Chris might have to cold his entire board, except for his manifest, but whatever. Well, I think he can he could probably just zero this turn. Yeah, you don't care too much about the Thunderbreak Regent? I don't think so. Not against the Genesis Hydra. And and Tom dies pretty quickly in this Ugh. spot. Dragon Lord Targa makes it slightly more attractive, I suppose, to clear the board and just win that way. But but Chris needs to keep a lot of his mana available too. This feels like a zero to me. We'll, we'll see momentarily. Now, this is a little bit of an interesting decision to be had here. If you do it for four, your creature goes down to three. Excuse me, your Planeswalker and Ugin goes down to three. Everything's off the table, however, except for Ugin and the Manifester. It looks like he's just going to go for zero. I guess he can clear out the Xenagos this way. Yeah. With these two creatures that have not got to attack yet, so that goes. Now, you're basically saying, can I beat a Thunder Rake Regent? I think I can. Yeah, with, with Hornet Queen in hand, Chris is only falling to ten from this attack, so Critter Claws is not really a short-term concern. And a Tarka coming next turn as well. And as you mentioned, Hornet Queen, too. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah. got... Uh, and I'm guessing the man to cast both. He's in <laughs> yeah. pretty good shape. It seems likely. Plus, if everything, if anything ever gets scary, you know you have Ugin. Yes. <laughs> That's a good, good place to be. You have the old reset button. Right. There's a Thunderbreak region number two. Thunderbreak region number one might be coming into the red zone here in just a moment. We'll see. I guess we can't forget that there's also an 8-8 Genesis Hydra in play. Yeah, it's easy to get lost in the shovel here of all the mana and whatnot, but Chris has got a lot of angles of attacks here. Yeah, yeah, to say the least. Last safety valves. Here comes Thunderbreak Regent. I think it's going right towards the van meter, and it is. Chris going to go down at 10. The follow-up is Nelvish Mystic, Judge is empty-handed. Van Meter knows he doesn't have to worry about too much. And as someone who has played Green Red Dragons a lot, Chris can actually kind of figure out what he needs to be worried about. So you have to worry about four because of Storm Breath Dragon. Mm -hmm. And you have to be worried about whatever Crater's Claws represents. But other than that, there's not a lot of burst in the deck. Yeah. I don't think there's much that's going to really take him by surprise. You know, I'm even thinking of corner case cards like, I don't know, a threaten effect. Exactly, yeah. Chris has now the luxury of playing around everything. He's yep. far enough ahead and has enough tools to fight Tom's responses that he can have the luxury, as you mentioned, of playing around cards that are probably not even in Tom's deck. Ugin is going to tick up. Get out of the way, Elvish Mystic. Can Chris finish things off right now? He's going to start by casting a Hornet Queen off of Nykthos. That's pretty good. Some insects will be joining the party. That'll tie up the air. Now, a bunch of knuckleheads going to get in. And I think at this point, Tom is probably forced to jump block the Genesis Hydra. I think he can, he's at 19. I think he can take one hit. Yeah, if, if he just eats a Rattleclaw Mystic or a Corsair of Groofus, he takes 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I think jump blocking here is essentially conceding. I think he's dead either way, but uh, to give yourself any hope, I think you have to go into next turn with a Thunder Brick region in play. He's going to make a block here. And it looks like 15 points of damage will come through. Corsair Krufix will bite the dust. Arbor Colossus will be turned face down since Corsair is no longer in play. Chris with a Dragon Lord Atarka in hand. Arbor Colossus on top of the deck. And Judge, this might be his last draw step of the game. It's going to have to be a real doozy. 
But Hornet Queen and the insects making life tough in the air, I'm not sure there, there's one that exists right now. It would have to be something like a random pyroclasm. Yeah, wind, it, it's wind a storm. Yeah, it, it requires a bizarre card here for Ton to be able to play on. And I'm looking through the 75 and I don't, I don't see it. Yeah, attack. I do like the attack Oh, uh, yes. Even with a little flourish. Yeah. Just like that. I am a big fan. <laughs> good, hey, good block by Chris. Love the block. Good block. And that's going to do it. Chris Van Meter is going to win this match here over Tom Judge. Two games to one. Green Red Devotional take care of Green Red Dragons. We just saw our first round of standard action. And three Green Red Devotion decks. Looks popular. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and if the Roanoke crew is correct in their assessment that there just aren't a lot of sweepers, I think this deck is an excellent choice. There's been other times, especially early on in Sander, when Blue Black Control was more of a player, that there was a big risk of playing this deck because there were sweepers and Perilous Vaults, very tough card for Green Devotion to play against. But it looks like most of the control decks have basically just moved into, oh, I've got Heroes Downfall, I've got Dem Protector, I've got Obzon Charm. It's, it's that kind of mixture of cards, and, and Green Devotion can definitely overpower that. Congratulations to Chris Van.